purpose of today's event, in addition to swearing the kids in, is to uh, make the public aware of the dangers of having a, a live tree in the house and some of the safety precautions you should take to make them safer. Uh, before we get into that, we know that every year, according to the NFBA, there's at least 14 fire deaths a year caused by tree fires and some 250 injuries and almost $14 million in direct property damage. Uh, we've been very fortunate in Philadelphia. We have not had that many incidents. However, at the beginning of this year, I believe it was on January 1st up on Bustleton Avenue, we did have a fire death caused as a direct result of a Christmas tree fire. And they lost the building. A lot of people were displaced. Also, candles are a big issue. We just had a fire caused by candles on uh, November 22nd. At 7034 Rising Sun, Rising Sun Avenue, it was a five alarm uh, apartment house fire in which 19 people were injured. Injured. Thank God nobody was killed in that fire, but they, the building was also lost and four firefighters were injured. I am happy to report today, though, that even the five people of the 19 that were injured in that fire were in critical condition. Everybody has been released from the hospital as of today. So, but they don't have a place to live right now. So that's the seriousness of these messages that we're trying to get out to you today. Um, we, we really appreciate partnering, and that's the only way we get these things done. We don't do it by ourselves, and it's because of our partners at the University of Pennsylvania who are able to, they've donated some 20,000 tickets, these uh, tickets that are going to go on the bottom of live trees, they'll be distributed to tree sale lots all throughout the city, and they'll be attached to the live trees. And they will tell you exactly how to keep these trees safe. We'll go down the list real quick. The first thing we're going to do, we'll demonstrate it in a second, is to cut a one-inch fresh cut at the, at the base of the tree. And the reason for that is these trees may have been sitting for weeks and weeks and weeks in these lots. And what happens is this seals off at the bottom, and the tree is not allowed or do, is not able to pull in moisture. And with that, the needles become dry, the tree becomes brittle, and it becomes a much greater fire hazard. So the thing is you want to keep the tree as moist and as pliable as possible. So the first thing we do is we cut a hole, we cut a fresh cut at the bottom of the tree right after you get it, and you're going to put it in water and leave it outside for at least 24 hours to absorb some of that water and to get it as fresh as possible. Now, there is also a formula every year that we give out, and it involves caro syrup and sugar and salt and things like that. I don't have it with me right here unless they have some copies. We have the copies here. Rather than bore you with all the ingredients that are on here, I will tell you that this is available on our, web, on our website, freedomfromfire.com, along with all these tips that we're going to go over. So that's freedomfromfire.com if you'd like a copy of this uh, recipe and also uh, the tips up there. So the first thing we want to tell people, if you're, well, let, let's start. Even before you get a fresh tree, if you have an artificial tree, one of the things you want to be careful about buying an artificial tree is to make sure that it is certified with a UL label on it, especially if it comes with lights, and it also has a label on there that says that it is fire retardant, all right, because they can also burn. With a live tree, you want to make sure that it is fresh, just like we were talking about, and we're going to make a cut to keep it fresh. Uh, you're going to place it firmly in the stand and, and, and uh, give it water. When you first put it in the stand, it will absorb a lot of water. They tell you to refill the thing every day. I'm telling you, the first day you may have to go back twice and refill it. And make sure you get the biggest stand you can that can hold the most amount of water. If you get those real tiny ones, it'll be out of water in no time. And if you leave it without water, the same thing will happen that happened in the tree lot. It will become sealed at the bottom and will not be able to absorb any more water to keep it fresh. Uh, check the water level every day. Check electrical cords. More than 50% of the tree fires that occur, occur because of electrical fires, because there's frayed wires, uh, you have an overloaded extension cord. If at all possible, go to the LED lights that they have now. Try to use the LED lights. They draw much less power, and they're cool to the touch. You're, you have a much better chance of not starting a fire with an LED light than you do with the traditional incandescent lights. Uh, never over overload the outlets. Never leave lighted trees unattended. If you're going out or going to bed, turn the tree off. Uh, this is a real important one. Don't let the tree block exits or stairs. Some people put them at the bottom of the staircase. It's one of the worst things you can do. If a fire starts in the tree, it blocks your way down from upstairs, so you don't want to do that. Uh, keep it away from all portable heaters and heat sources. We're talking about fireplaces. We're talking about heat vents. Anybody that has forced air heat in their house knows how that dries out your throat and your sinuses. It does exactly the same thing into the tree. You have to keep them at least three feet away from any of those sources. Uh, be sure to keep the tree uh, free of ornaments when you get rid of it. 
uh, before disposable. And I think we're going to have our streets department come up and talk about that right after I get done making this cut. Now, I'm going to attempt to make this cut. Now, I understand they may have put a spike in here. So if it looks like it takes me a long time to cut it, that's the reason. It's not because of me. And I understand you also have a first aid kid standing by. <laughs> Now, la see, last year we didn't take this off. And the commissioner stood here for quite a while trying to cut this tree. Anybody to use? Okay. Now, that, they did that on purpose. I'm sure these aren't going to fit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> Just the one glove? Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, they did put the spike in there. Huh? Hold the tree. It's got plenty of sap in it. That's why it's grabbing. Turn it back to you, Joe. All right, let's hear it for Chief Devlin.